is going to provide as much forced air as my little heart desires. The problem is the rest of the car. Right, guys so welcome back thank you for hanging out spending a few moments here with me if you're new definitely make sure you hit that subscribe button i really do appreciate it now this is not an update video or anything like that uh where i'm hoping to get some dyno footage and and show you guys some results uh with the current setup by rzt the twin turbo uh, this is really just a video to kind of address a whole bunch of questions or some of the, the more popular questions that were thrown in my direction. Now, one of the biggest questions is why I chose to do a twin turbo over a supercharger. My original intention was to actually go with a supercharger. Uh, I was really looking at um, a few of the centrifugal force blowers. The reason why I wanted to go in that direction at that particular time was because I really liked the 392 intake manifold. I liked my current setup, uh, the Hellcat throttle body, everything. It, I felt like it, it would all work really well if I if I just did a, a nice little bolt-on blower, you know, maybe eight to 10 pounds of boost and, you know, I would be on my way. It didn't really pan out that way. I wasn't really uh, too enthusiastic about kind of the way that some of those centrifugal force blowers kind of sounded. <laughs> Most of those setups were probably around seven thousand dollars, okay, give or take. Um, and then I started looking at the, you know, the root style blower, the the positive displacement, and um, I just I love the positive displacement blower. The sound of of the wine and everything like that on a nice Magnuson or a Whipple or something like that that definitely attracted me. <laughs> Uh, but I really wanted to try something a little bit different. I didn't want to put like a 2.9 or some kind of uh, 2300 Magnus in on. I really wanted to go and do something that was uh, a little bit different, kind of like my Stroker kit, the 397. So I was trying to line up something along the lines of like uh, the new Whipple was going to be coming out with a three liter and they use that on a drag pack. And I was really trying to, to get that lined up, but they still, I don't even believe, uh, have that out. Uh, the next thing was a Magnuson that's for Hellcats. And um, ag again, you know, like to do the Hellcat supercharger, uh, I was looking into that, but it needs a front end conversion. And I'll tell you, it starts adding up real quick uh, if you are not doing the work yourself. So you need to, you know, you need to make that supercharger kind of fit. And, uh, you know, once you start crunching the numbers and you realize how much money you're going to end up spending doing something that's a little bit offbeat with a supercharger, it really wasn't worth it. And uh, I was entering twin turbo uh, territory from a financial standpoint. And that really, you know, narrowed it down to what it is that I wanted to do. I figured, you know, there's no companies stepping up that want to help the channel and sponsor it and um, get advertising out of, out of the deal. So, you know, that's fine. It is what it is. I'm, um, you know, I'm not a big channel by any stretch of the imagination. So, you know, I don't blame a lot of the companies, but you know, that, that really kind of geared me towards the, the twin turbo, you know, I figure I'm going to be spending the money. I might as well get what I think has the, the best ceiling and the most efficient. And that, that is twin turbos. Basically you're using uh leftover exhaust, uh, to make more power. Whereas in both of the other options, a supercharger, uh, it takes a certain amount of horsepower to make more horsepower. And you're essentially robbing yourself of, uh, power. And so I figured the twin turbo setup not only is the most efficient, has the highest ceiling, but it also is the least maintenance, okay? They are running oil lines down to those uh, turbos. And as long as I keep up with my oil changes every 3,000 miles, I'll put, you know, some synthetic in there and it should be good to go. You beat on the car, you do, you know, yourself a $100 oil change and the turbo should last uh, a pretty long time. I really like the idea of putting a permanent 
um, system in place and, you know, just worrying about the oil changes and stuff like that. I'm not going to, I'm going to, I'm going to have more consistency from run to run, from pull to pull. And, you know, that, that really essentially was the, the, the reasoning behind I actually went down this route. All of, all the options are great. I highly doubt I'll ever see the, the true potential of the twin turbos, but at least I know that the twin turbos are there and as I continue going down this road, I can always crank up the boost. I can always do more things um, to support that system, okay? Uh, so, you know, it's just, it has a very high ceiling and a ceiling that I personally, I don't think I'm going to end up using. That being said, I never in a million years thought that I would get to a point where I had a stroker cammed, you know, 397 underneath my RT's hood. I never thought I had uh, would have a wide body. I mean, this stuff has kind of gotten um, really far. I never thought three years ago, four years ago, I would get to this level of of modification. But you know, it is what it is. It's it's all in the name of fun and 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 documenting it and pushing this RT to see, you know, how far this platform can actually go. And, uh, you know, I've hit a certain point in mod modifying where everything is super expensive. So it is taking me a lot longer to save up and, and, and get these, uh, pieces that I need in place. Uh, in the beginning, you know, it was $500 here, a thousand dollars here or whatever. Now you're talking $8,000, $10,000, $3,000. So, you know, it, it really starts adding up as you continue developing power. And, uh, you know, a lot of people have been pointing out a lot of the things that need to get upgraded uh, for this twin turbo setup for my RT. And the number one thing is fueling, okay? I still have stock injectors. I have an aftermarket pump, but everything else is pretty much stock. So the injectors are now gonna have to get updated. That's $1,000 right there. Uh, the transmission's gonna have to get updated. The drive shaft's gonna have to get updated. The braking is gonna have to get updated. And you know, this stuff, definitely adds up but you know that's part of the building process it's just you know i gotta take my time i have to research things and um you know this twin turbo setup is not going to see its true for full potential for years okay because i put it in place because i never want to have to worry about um upgrading it or anything like that it's going to provide as much forced air as my little heart desires the problem is the rest of the car and that's exactly what I'm going to have to start taking care of. I'm going to have to start um, uh, saving up. Even, you know, an upgraded suspension is going to have to happen. Upgraded tires are going to have to happen. Even for daily use, my 315 all seasons are going to be useless. So, you know, it really all starts adding up. And, um, you know, I'm not saying this to to really, uh, you know, get any money out of anybody. Just keep watching those commercials. That's all I ask of anybody is to watch the commercials. Um, I'm doing this just to say that, you know, I am not going to show these twin turbos its true potential uh, for a while, okay? Because I do, I have to upgrade the other parts of the car uh, to accommodate for that twin turbo and monster 397 engine.